Hey YouTube, this is The Art of Prepping. Let's just talk about Alone Season 3, Episodes 2 through 8 on the History Channel. You may be asking, wow, where have you been? Um, well, I haven't had access uh, to watch these videos because after the first you know, episode on the Season 3, uh, the History Channel app uh, blocked and locked out those videos and they want you to pay $1.99. So I was like, nope, I'm not going to do that. And so even though I was all set up to do really in detail commentary like I did on the first uh, episode, I had to just kind of say, you know, I guess change of plans. And it was very disappointing because I really, really like this show. In fact, this show is amazing. Um, in terms of where we're at now, we're on episode eight. Um, now, I do believe there's actually nine uh, episodes out, but they don't count zero. Uh, you know, there's like episode zero is kind of like the um, the very beginning or the one right before the prefix, I guess, before episode one kind of does background information on the individual. So they kind of don't really count that one. Uh, but there's eight episodes, uh, you know, or at least we're on number eight, if you will. And so, um, yeah, and that's on we're on day 72 now and there's four people left. And so it's very exciting. You know? And I'm not trying to compare like these with apples and oranges kind of thing, because I think it is in terms of season one and two versus season three, because they're in a totally different environment. So I can't really sit here and say, oh, it's so comparable. Uh, but they are lasting a lot longer, you know, um, on season three. So I don't know if that's just skill level or if it's just environment or a mixture of the both. I don't know. But all I can tell you, there's some amazing people on season three on alone. So the way I was thinking about trying to get caught up with this uh, th this season three was to just basically go and just talk a little bit briefly about each person. Because I did write up a bio when I first started all this, thinking that I was going to do extremely detailed uh, commentary like I did on the first episode. And so I'm just going to go through and maybe just update and uh, and just talk a little bit. So the first person is Dave. Um, he's the bushcraft teacher, uh, 49 years old. Uh, a little high strong. Of course, these are just my notes. These are how I looked at it. And um, and he's a, he was a pretty thin guy to begin with, in my opinion. Um, he did have a little bit more muscle than I really realized. Um, and then, you know, throughout the uh, the episodes, he got thinner and thinner. And what it was, it's not so much he lost like fat. It was just he lost a lot of muscle. And he got really weak toward the end, as we know. And he couldn't even string his bow um, and that's going to be ma major problems, even though he wasn't like catching anything with his bow. Uh, and that's the thing with the show. There's things that people bring that I don't know how good of a, of a choice it is, like a slingshot or a bow. Uh, because to my knowledge, I really don't remember any kind of major success with those items through any of the, uh, the seasons on alone, but maybe that's something that could happen in the future. We'll see. And so, um, you know, for the most part here, uh, he says that the, the most he's ever been out during winter camping or survival was 44 days. And he teaches survival and bushcraft for, he said, about uh, 20 years worth now. So you do kind of have some expectations. He's like, wow, he's supposed to be a survival instructor. So I had him at number five. And so he just uh, actually exceeded my expectation, which is cool. And the only reason it wasn't wasn't because of skill or nothing that I thought he wasn't going to last. It's just because his low body weight and going into winter, I really had some questionable doubt if he's going to get enough calories and protein to really be able to weather um, the environment. I'm just going to be honest with you. He's just so skinny. Now, if he was like 20 pounds heavier, I'd probably put him at like one or two on the list. Now, the next person, uh, but going back to Dave real quick, uh, he's very impressive. Uh, he really is. He's a cool guy. And uh, right off the bat, I really he was likable, and I really did like him as well. And, um, yeah, so uh, uh, I wish him the best. He's still in the game, so that's awesome. Um, the next individual is Fowler. Yeah, he's still in the game as well. I had him um, up to this point. Now, if he lasts any bit longer than anybody else, then that would exceed my expectations. And, of course, all these expectations and were from my original assessments based on the very little bit, little bit of information I had. If I knew what I knew now, I would have probably redone quite a bit of this. Uh, but you only know what you know. So, um, so Fowler, uh, he's a boat builder, and he just likes to work with his hands. Uh, he said he's a self-taught survivalist, and he's of 
uh, average weight. Actually, he was probably just a little bit thicker than average. You know, when you're when you're watching the show, you get to see from the beginning to the end there. Uh, well, at least on episode uh, eight, how much he how much weight he's lost. And I'm sure there's some muscle mass, no doubt. Uh, but he was probably a little bit stockier than I even realized. So he was probably just slightly above average weight, which gave him a good advantage because he had more body fat. So uh, he's doing great. He's really a fun guy, really personable. You know, I mean, his personality is super, uh, just super fun. And he has a great positive attitude. He's missing his family a lot. It's wearing on him really, really bad. And so I don't know. I think he could be the next or within the next two contestants to leave. I think that he might be one of them just because the emotional part is starting to really flare up. Uh, Callie. Okay, I I had her just because of limited information. Now, Callie has, has um, uh, contributed to the channel, uh, and I've uh, communicated with her uh, through the comment section. Uh, she seemed like she's a very cool person. And if I only knew what I knew, you know, now I would have not put her at the first person to leave. Um, uh, she's uh, an herbalist, uh, 27, uh, skinny. Uh, well, at the time, you know, when I was doing these evaluations, I thought she was really skinny, but she was probably just average weight. Um, but she apparently lost a lot of weight as well. Uh, she's a very chill kind of person. Um, I thought from the very beginning that she wasn't very highly skilled in survival just because how – uh, some of the intro videos uh, portrayed her. And that just shows you it's, you can't really rely on the History Channel to give you all the facts. Uh, she says she's spiritual, kind of a new agey, kind of hippie kind of um, mentality, which is fine. Um, but, um, you know, if I knew what I knew, I would have put her probably like in the middle. Um, you know, and that's kind of where she she just dropped out, you know, in episode eight. So, um you know, I would have probably put her at four or five, uh, so somewhere in the middle, and uh, I would have probably been, you know, uh, hitting the uh, hitting the target there. But uh, I didn't know what I knew. So uh, she's very cool, though. She's so likable in so many ways. Uh, but then there's also some, maybe it's just the new age part and how it can kind of conflict with my worldviews. Um, there's there's um like this this reverence for nature, uh, but. Uh, there's also a, kind of like just for me personally, I'm a little confused about her outlook, though, spiritually about some other things. But once again, that's just of a personal nature. So, um, you know, I wish her the best. Uh, the next person would be Britt. Now, Britt, um, he left. Um, he was in the first five to leave. And uh, he's an accountant, um, age 40 of average weight. And uh, he said he was a self-taught, uh, you know, outdoors person, survivalist. Um, he was a bit on the thin side, I thought, but I don't know about that. So per se, you know, when you're wearing clothes a lot, these people, um, you can't really see how thick they really are, but I think he was probably more like average weight and, uh, he has a small kid and he's married and he seemed like he's in a really good relationship and Brett seemed like he's a really cool guy. I had him being number three, uh, you know, like not a runner up from winter, but like third from the, from the winter spot. Um, unfortunately though, he's gone. And so I was wrong with him, you know, and, uh, that's really disappointing. I think he had the potential. I just think that emotionally just, uh, he couldn't do it just like, you know, I don't know if I could do it either or, and a lot of these other contestants couldn't do it. Okay. The next person is Zach. Now I had him being the second person to tap out and wow. Uh, if my memory is correct, I think he was the second, but it wasn't because of what I thought it was going to happen. It was because he actually injured himself with his ax. He cut his arm pretty bad, and he needed to get uh, it cleaned out and stitched. And they had to, to you know, they had to have him go uh, to a facility, I believe, to do that. They couldn't do it there in the in the wild. So um, he's a young guy, though, 22. He's a wilderness living skills survivor. Uh, so, I'm sorry, instructor uh, that teaches survival and uh, kind of skinny. I had that was the reason I put him so low was because I thought he was skinny. And now that I think about it, though, it kind of goes hand in hand, though, that he even believed that he didn't really have enough calories to stay kind of alert. And that might have led him into getting hurt and injured. Um, he said that the most he's ever survived was 32 days. And he was concerned about, you know, uh, you know, how it's going to all be, you know, because he was saying that he was going to he was going to be pretty anxious about stuff. And he kind of was. He was a little bit more high strung and emotional than I thought he was going to be. Not emotional and like he was breaking down crying, but emotional in the sense that he couldn't handle just the environment. 
everything was really getting on his nerves. And that was probably probably like 90 plus percent just calorie deficiency. So he left, um, you know, uh, pretty early on there. Well, very early. So um, I was correct on, on it when he left, but kind of for different reasons. Now, Jim, the first person to leave within the first few days, he was a major disappointment. I had him at number four from winning, uh, so close to the middle. And uh, he was kind of a shocker. He's a high school teacher. I thought that alone, having all that peer pressure and all the kids looking up to him, that he would last a little more than a few days. Uh, but mentally, he was so not prepared. He's 37 years old. Uh, he admitted that he did not have much hands-on experience with survival, but uh, he taught it. So, um, you know, some people just teach better than uh, than do. Uh, he was a rather thick guy. I mean, he would have probably lasted really long if he had the determined, you know, you know, determination or will to do it, uh, but he just didn't have that. Um, so, yeah, um, Jim was a major disappointment, but I wish him the best. And uh, that leads us to Carly. Um, I thought that she'd be this, you know, probably the third person, honestly, to to leave. Uh, she's a carpenter, 28 years old. She lives up in the wilderness. Uh, she has, I thought at that point, just some skills, not a lot of skills, but she actually has a lot of skills. And that just shows you, uh, you know, once again, how the History Channel really didn't portray her at her potential. Um, you know, she seemed like she was average weight, uh, very mellow affect, almost at times kind of flat affect. Um, and so she doesn't get excited very easily, which is kind of good because you don't want to get all worked up over nothing. And she said that she's looking for adventure and experience. Um, it was just because of how she was portrayed that I thought she was going to be the third one out. Uh, but she's still in, and she's awesome. I mean, she's really cool. Um, I mean, she's actually really surpassed my expectations, and I think that she will get very far. In fact, I think she'll be in the top two uh, if I had to readjust all this. But anyways, all this is just for fun, and it's like – it's just kind of cool to see how people are different than you think they are just because they were portrayed in a certain way. And that's why it's just a, it's a show. It's a game show really. Uh, the next individual is Dan. Now, he's gone. Um, he just recently left in the show kind of toward the middle there. Um, he's a trapper, 34 years old, uh, full-time outdoors uh, man. I think he said he's like a woodsman and trapper uh, full-time, and uh, he processes hides. And he prefers trapping over hunting. He has a small kid. Uh, he seemed like that he was average weight, but a little bit thick, uh, maybe just like, you know, build. And I thought he was going to be the winner. And this is, of course, it was a hard one because it was between Dan and Greg were my top two. But I thought Dan was going to just just barely edge him out. But the more I think about him that, and the more I know about him, he's actually a little bit bigger guy than I thought. Not like uh, overweight by any means. He was just really a very thick guy in terms of muscular. And I kind of didn't really see that in the beginning of uh, introduce, you know, when they were introducing him. So, uh, cause he had so much clothes on, but man, he, he just burnt through his calories and emotionally, I think he just couldn't handle it anymore. And so he just gave up no more will. So I was really disappointed, but I kind of understand how difficult it is. Like they say, the bigger you are, uh, the harder it is to survive longer because you just consume more and you need more, you know, calories. And so I kind of don't really knock the guy. He, he lasted a long time. Um, the next person is Megan. She's awesome. Uh, I thought that she was going to really be leaving a little bit closer toward the middle of the group, but she's still in there. Of course, there's a lot of rumors from the very beginning that there was a little bit of a leak and that she's supposed to win. We'll see if that's true so far. I mean, she's still in, so maybe it is true that there was kind of a uh, kind of an informal back and forth with a few of the um, the members of season three, one in particular with uh, Megan uh, congratulating her. And so I don't know if that was a leak or if that's just they were congratulating because they were congratulating each other. But but the person came to Megan's site, apparently, I think it was her Facebook account, I believe, or Twitter, one of the two and congratulating her. So I think that something's up there, but she's a biologist, 41 years old. Uh, she seemed like she was of average weight. She's very attractive, very nice, uh, extremely smart and bright. Uh, she's a forestry expert and wildlife e expert and has lots of experience with wildlife and edibles. Uh, she does have kids, very young kids. Um, and, uh, at the time, in the very beginning, it kind of portrayed that she had basic survival skills, but no, I'd say that she has extremely advanced survival skills, 
and uh, she said that she was going to stay busy, and she has. And uh, in the very beginning, they try to show her have a little bit of motion, uh, but I think anybody is going to be emotional leaving their family for a, a period of time, especially since I do believe that she believed that she was going to be gone for a long time, and she's lasted so far 72 days, so she's still in the role uh, to possibly win. So I'm I'm thinking, man, that she probably will be in the top two, just just from what I see. She's very consistent and 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 she has a good focus and. And I can tell you, man, she's very impressive. Uh, I mean, she's been able to find food, I mean, pretty consistently, even if it's just edibles, you know, in terms of wild edibles and uh, plant matter. Um, the last person here is Greg. Um, I thought he was going to be the runner up, if not possibly the winner, uh, just because, well, there's a lot of things. Um, after I made my first prediction in the very, very beginning as numbered, he's, he's going to be the runner up. I kind of was like in my mind thinking and wishing that I put him at number one. And it was only just because, well, there's a few things, but he doesn't have a lot of things to go back to. And he had his daughter as a sole uh, motivating factor to help her. He, he wanted to help her you know, get some land and to build um, a, a little house. Well, he wanted to build it for her. And he wanted the resources to do that. Plus, he didn't have any retirement. To my knowledge, this, this was going to be his retirement as well, the, the winnings, which I think that some of these people don't realize that after tax, and I'm assuming after they're going to have to pay tax on the half a million, that they're going to be getting probably at most two hundred and fifty to two hundred seventy thousand dollars. I mean, from what I understand about taxes, so it's not like that much money. I'm not even sure that's enough to even retire on. In my opinion, that's not enough to retire on, and that's not enough to buy also land and to build a house. So I'm not really sure what the thought was there, but maybe it was just to kind of get them started. I don't know. But Greg is extremely likable. I really like him. He's one of my favorite people between Fowler and Greg. Uh, and I will have to say Callie are one of like my most favorite personalities, and I like them all. I really do like them all. Dave is super awesome, and I don't want to leave anybody out, but I'm just going to say I liked them all. But, man, Greg, you, you know your heartstrings just get pulled when you see him struggle for his daughter and to better himself, and you want him to win. At least I do. And so, man, it was so sad to see him just leave you know, I think it was in what episode uh, seven, I believe, roughly. I can't remember all this, but because uh, I binge watched it all at one time. But I believe it was episode seven, and he got um, uh, hypothermic. I think it was stage two, and he had to leave. He was starting to make some pretty bad decisions, in fact. So he was the drywaller uh, from up north, um, you know, 53 years old. Uh, not much formal survival skills, but self taught. He seemed like he was slightly overweight and a bit thick, but he was very. He had some really good muscle tone. He was very strong, and anyways, he knew his plants and how to build shelters. Uh, he just had a lot of motivation to better himself, and uh, it just didn't happen. So, anyway, that's the recap. Uh, thanks for joining me. If you have any comments or insight on these characters or your any future predictions, uh, things anything can happen. People can get injured further. Um, thanks for your support. Catch you later.